Uh, <laughs> holy crap. What happened? I remember this camper being good. I don't remember it being quite this good. She's gonna weigh in about 5,800 pounds as we see it here today, which is going to land this solidly, I think, within the realm of safe, reasonable half-ton towability, especially considering its very manageable length, weight, uh, and the better suspension system and tire package that Rockwood uses. This is going to be a tower and goer's dream. If what you're looking for is something that gives you super slide living space without a 32 foot camper, maybe you want to go touring through some national parks where, you know, sometimes you get something over 28 feet, it can be really hard to start weaving it around those trails. That's exactly where this one's going to come in. And also working in the favor of traveler's function is the fact that this one has with the slide closed, deceptively good travel capability. Uh, you can get to just about anything and everything without even cracking the slide out open. And the camp kitchen enhancements they put on this one, I think are significant. They're very handy. You know, for a lot of years, the 2507S, I would always describe it as like, oh, it's a 2509 bunkhouse just with no bunkhouse. And it always felt lacking. And I don't feel that anymore. I don't exactly know what they did to move the needle but they cranked it up to 11. And man, this color package, this, it, the Newport ash and stone combination uh, of, you know, woodwork, flooring and fabrics that we're looking at. This is my jam. I am jelly and this is my jam right here. I, I like how the folks built this thing. I may start uh, applying a, a couple of the options that I'm seeing here to our standard stock builds at Halet RV because I like what they did. Now, this floor plan, um, sometimes if you've never been in it, you don't realize the entertainment in this is actually really good. Rockwood was one of the first to kind of break the mold by putting the TV above the kitchen counter right there. And I get it that it's not a traditional place to put the television, but with a swing out TV like they're using right here, it works if you're hanging out over here in the in the u dinette where i'm at right now this is kind of your point of view when you're sitting here having a bite to eat you can stay in tune with things you can be in the kitchen at the countertop you can still be in you know tune with the entertainment not to mention the fact that they did a good job of putting some door side windows on this wherever they had the opportunity now one of the several options that the previous well not previous i'm sorry the new owners of this ordered RV applied is instead of pleated nightshades, they opted for these nice blackout roller shades right there. And let me ask you folks, is that a make or break thing for you? It, would you like buy it or not buy it because of that? Is that something you'd like to have? I'm always open to feedback. Similarly, on mini lights, you have the option of adding a second uh, Max Air vent fan with roof vent cover up here. That's actually standard on the roof because I think airflow is more important on those hybrids. But you can do that on any of the mini lights as well, typically over the bedroom space like we're seeing right here. And this is what makes this floor plan so good. You see over here, we've got a big dinette slide. That's what I call a true U dinette that an adult could lay on and sleep on and stretch out on if need be. But during the day, the bed just hides away like we're looking at right now. And it gives you the space and the seating of a super slide without the weight and the cost of a super slide. But it does so much more than that. So first of all, when you're just sitting here, there's room. Three adults could definitely sit here. I'm a big, long, lanky guy, you know. I've got my nice cheap Walmart socks. I'm wearing a hole in my shoes here. I, I tend to be one of those people that... I get my money out of things, which is why sometimes the necks of my undershirts look like I crawled through them from the neck first, but enough about me. This is nice, it's, it's great, but it's not a recliner. Or is it? Boom, bonus, tough acting to actin. Rockwood makes it happen. With what I like to call a simulated cinema seat, because they also include this handy little fold down armrest over here. Now, this has these nice big side stands over here, and I will always tell you the good with the bad at Halo RV. This is nice because 99% of the time, most of the day, this can act as like a place to set a drink, set your phone, anything like that. You know, you've got your plugs and your chargers, you've got your over-the-bed light switches right here. You might have noticed those flicker a little bit. I like, like, I'm, I'm forgetful, like, all, all the time. This, this isn't just some character I play on TV. I'm kind of like this. I will sit down with a dinner plate, forget my drink. So I like to set my plate down, go get my drink, have a place for my drink. Like This works for me. This makes a lot of sense. Quick little pro tip on these. When you're done with them, you got to kind of pull your feet in, by the way, and then they go, uh, they go right away. 
But the thing is, this is all great. This simulated cinema seating, I'll be shocked if... I, I can't believe more manufacturers haven't copied it yet. But that's always the plus one stuff Rockwood does. They always do anything anybody else does, plus one more. And I don't know if there's a better example of that than how they do their Murphy beds. And I tell you, I hope you appreciate the, the extra display and showing here. Because I'm a one-man band. I don't also have, like, an editing team and a camera guy. I do all this stuff. And i got to figure it out all on the fly and how to position all these things. But enough about that. This Murphy bed, I think Rockwood has the best Murphy bed in the market, period. And we carry other brands here at Halet RV that have Murphy beds. I don't think they're as good as Rockwood. And I will I, I will say that if you ask me questions about that on the other videos that have Murphy beds, I'll say the same thing. They do extra little things like just a little pull handle to drop this little jackknife sofa, which, by the way, you, this is your pass-through storage. We'll look at that more from the outside, but you can get to it in here if you need to. Um, <coughs> literally choked on thin air. Not everybody has that kind of natural talent, but here we are. So you've got double bullet latches that hold this in place. And this is a safety locked Murphy bed. There's like a pinball machine thing that you got to pull here to let go of this mechanism. So that if you get up here and you sit on this Murphy bed, you don't get lawn chaired down into this thing and stuck in the front and have to call for help, you know, click with your little clicker saying, help, I can't get up. Now, another thing here, you notice the bedding is in place. Now, by the way, just like... Uh, when you're strapping down cargo, when you strap down cargo and you pull that strap, if you don't flick it, that cargo's coming off the truck. Guaranteed. That always happens. But Rockwood includes these handy little buckle straps. And it's a one-piece bed. There's no seams or anything like that in here. It is all easy peasy one piece. There's one caveat to this, though. And again, I will always tell you the positive with the negative with everything else. With the Rockwood Murphy bed, this is a camp queen. Because the bed has to flip up, I don't believe it's it's the kind of mattress you can very easily accomplish a true queen on unless you source and find uh, like an extra little six inch spacer block so that once you drop the bed, you could scoot this forward, put that up there. Your pillows would cover the six inch spacer block seam so you could create a true queen bed, but this really can't be, uh, especially considering the, the walls are six and a half foot tall, plus it has about a three, four inch vault, maybe not that severe, two and a half inch on a Rockwood, I'm sorry. and. There's not enough headroom to have an 80-inch bed flip straight up. And a lot of people don't like it when the bed is on an angle, so Rockwood leaves it straight up. But that means that we have to have a camp queen. There's always a push and a pull, and that's the information I want to give you so that you can always buy with more confidence from our team. Now, there's a couple other little details here. Uh, like, up on the headboard, there's a set of power outlets over in that corner so that if you need to use it for CPAP function, you can. Another really handy thing here is that with a Murphy bed, you lose a little bit of privacy. But with Rockwood, they include a curtain here. And notice how the curtain does not also encompass the entry door. I've seen that done wrong from other manufacturers, too. The whole point of this is that if somebody walks in the door, they're not looking at you breathing while you're sleeping. So now you don't have that problem here. Rockwood doing Rockwood things. And just because you couldn't really easily see it, I did want you to get a better look at this headboard area up here. Um, first of all, obviously you've got that full front window. It's really only in play when the bed is down. Nothing says you have to really use this like a Murphy bed model, though. What you can do is you can just leave it as a queen bed model all the time. And then all you have to do is put the bed away, basically, when it's time to go for travel mode. And remember, this is what I call a hard side hybrid. Because like a hybrid camper, the bed doesn't eat up floor plan space. The bed is just kind of hidden away, squirreled away. But that headboard there is about six inches deep, so it is actually big enough for CPAP machines. You see the power outlets tucked away in that bottom corner. This is a really smartly done, very highly detailed front end. And again, it's all those extra little things Rockwood's doing here that not everybody does. And that before and after effect, it's so dramatic. And since they had to leave room for the bed, that means that if you're sitting at the sofa and somebody walks in the door, there's plenty of room here. Now, that is a full viewing window in the entry door, by the way. Uh, not to mention the fact that uh, it is shade ready. So if you do want to install a privacy shade in that, it's all kind of pre-prepped to do so. It is uh, tinted from the outside. Now, remember that TV can pivot around for easy viewing from wherever. And again, the ceiling is vaulted. I don't use a tricky fisheye camera angle lens. I have them available. I just don't think that this provides a fair and accurate depiction of this. I get that it looks huge. I get that it looks nice this way, but 
that's not how the RV really looks, really feels. And I'm always trying to give you the real information as much as I can. Like the uh, solid surface countertops that we're looking at here. This, uh, the stainless sink that's inset into that. The pop-up power tower here, uh, by the way, that's GFI protected because it is near a water source. And if they didn't have that, there wouldn't be uh, a lot of, uh, you know, outlets that are easily accessible here in this kitchen design. That's a very handy thing to have right there. Now, if uh, you want to, oh, I, like, I like the fact that they leave you a physical switch panel here. But if uh, you want to do, let's say you're outside, you want to roll the awning in or out, you want to turn the awning light in or out, you can do all that right here off your phone. You like that shameless self-promotion right there? Uh-huh. You like that? Anyway, and uh, you can go digital on these functions if you are so inclined. Down below, if the RV you're looking at has the solar package, that's where the charge controller is going to be located. You notice how we do not have any floor vents in here, but we do still have a little bit of carpet in the slide out. Again, I will always be fair with you at Halet RV. If I could change one thing, and it frankly, it's the only thing on a Rockwood right now that I would like to see changed, I would like to get the carpet out of the slide. Rockwood came out with 20 new floor plans for the 2021 model year, and I think they just ran out of engineering time. Now, as you see here, this can fold down into a big adult size sleeper. And actually, you know what? I'm going to set that back up again, and I'm, I'm doing the full Monty today, baby. I am going to open this sucker up, and I'm going to stretch out and let you see how big it is. Man, this camper's fun. I'm having fun doing this today. Sometimes I go through a camper and some days it just feels like work and that's a J-O-B. I get it. You come to work, you put on your boots or in my case, you take off your shoes. Rockwoods are, they're cut apart. Um, I didn't want to put my shoes on someone else's cushions, obviously. Now what I did here is I took one of these cushions to kind of simulate pillows so that you get a really good idea of how big this is. Remember, I'm not a small guy. I've got plenty of room on this thing. I've got uh, two, three inches above my head. I, got, I, I can't even stretch my toes out to hit down there. And you're getting a good old look at the dad bod here. Also, I'm not like super old or anything, but I did realize I was starting to get older when I realized how hard it was to get up. You don't realize how old you're getting until you sit down for a while and try to get up and your stomach muscles quiver because they're like, I don't want to do it. Just me? Anybody? But like an infomercial. But wait, there's more! That table's on a free-floating elliptical base. You can move it around wherever you want. Rockwood gives us drawers below the dinette seating. The rear bench, by the way, you can get to from the inside, but you can also get to it from the outside. And you see over here how when they extend the slide out to incorporate that extra storage, all the space that we're getting here. One of the other kind of cool features of this is the shelves are removable, and that can convert into a closet if you need extra closet space. Bonus storage overhead in the slide is something more and more and more brands are going away from. I like to see a classic brand like Rockwood continue to maintain that kind of stuff. Now, when you get rid of the cabinets over the um, kitchen area, you start to feel like, oh man, did I lose storage? No. No, you did not. Instead, you gained a huge pantry over here with that handy motion activated lighting. And notice how they cut the cabinets just a bit short in case you wanted to put like a little... A uh, broom hanger or something in there. This RV has been outfitted with the optional 10.7 cubic foot DC compressor fridge versus the standard 8 cubic foot two-way gas electric fridge, which is great for boondocking. The solar package comes automatically when you get this uh, bigger refrigerator, however. This would be definitely my personal preference. Also, Rockwood gives us an oven where we can actually do some cooking. A larger 22-inch oven versus a lot of the smaller 16s. They give us some plywood drawers right where it counts. Flip-up countertop extension versus the old bracket-on kind, so it's just simpler and easier here. Not to mention, around the bend, that rear corner space under the countertop would be hard to get to. And I say would be, because Rockwood made sure you can always easily reach it. Now, remember when uh, we were looking at the Murphy bed, I said that this is the pass-through storage under the sofa. That's all there is to it. There's no magic trick to that either. You can just bend it halfway and it holds itself. Easy in, easy out. In a sense, it gives you storage access very similar to like a uh, gas strut assisted kind of bed. Now, uh, you've got the all hardwood cabinet door frames. We're all pocket screwed. You've got hidden hinges throughout. Everything on this dressed and pressed very, very nicely. And I love how symmetrical it is. Having drawers on both sides. They just... 
they just do it right. Like I said, the only thing I wish uh, they would do different, and they probably will later on. I don't know when. I don't have information on this. I bet they'll get rid of the carpet eventually. It hasn't happened yet. It's not stopping me from camping. It's just a preference, you know? And since that table's free floating, nothing says it has to sit there the whole time. If you want this thing to look and feel big and open, you can move that around, or you can come over here and do a little Dinofa action. Do a little puzzle day, do a little work camp, and turn it into a miniature desk on the fly. You could fold that down and use it like a, a coffee table, you know? Whatever works for you. Now, uh, the windows. I don't talk about this very much on Rockwood Mini Lights, um, but the windows on this specific RV have been optioned to a dual pane window. There is, uh, and you can always tell very easily because a lot of the windows will actually have a sticker that says insulated window on it. I don't like that terminology. It's not specifically an insulated window. You're not really gaining a whole lot in the way of R values. Uh, what you are really getting, I tell you, one of the biggest advantages of those dual pane windows is sound dampening. When I'm not talking, it is very quiet and pleasant here. By the way, larger 15,000 BTU Coleman quiet air conditioner. And if you're noticing Rockwood always double ducks everything, like the mighty ducks. <laughs> Midwestern accent getting me there. So you see that, you know, you can turn these individually. We are going to, I'm going to make note of that. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That is not right. We're going to get that replaced before these folks come take care of that. I'm glad I caught that. Um, and it's all the little things. The Flappy Doodle Deluxe 9000 series. You flip it once, you flip it twice. It's just as nice. There you go. Walking in the bathroom here. This is like a fifth wheel bathroom. Actually, I think it's better than a lot of fifth wheel bathrooms. You got that extra large vent fan up top here. I'll get all the storage open up for you here in just a second. But if you're fluffy, she's friendly. This is a big toilet space that even a big guy like me can fit around. Great countertop space in here. Uh, you know, your, your dedicated Lipitor cabinet, <laughs> as it were. And since this does have a vaulted ceiling and being a laminated roof, they could put that skylight exactly where they wanted it. They made sure that this was nice and tall for big people like me. Now, a couple other handy little doodads and gizmos and whiz bangs. We've got the Aquaview Shower Miser Water Saver System if you're boondocking to help avoid uh, prematurely flooding your gray tank and using fresh water. The little shower uh, body wash caddy and, and stuff like that. You've got all that here. And you see how deep this shower is. That is exactly how deep all that storage is, too. And these are nice, heavy-duty kind of fixed shelves right here versus the removable shelves that we saw earlier. That will work fine for pantry space or clothing, but you want to put big body washes, you know, tubes of liquid in here, you can. Handy light switch to activate the lights right when you walk in the door, by the way. And then across the way, uh, because behind the toilet, that big blank wall, that is the outside camp kitchen. And just to give you another view of the leg room here, by the way, it's, I mean, there's, this is a big bathroom. But you've got this big chunk of storage above the camp kitchen over here. I like that shelf space on the right-hand side. And you see how it's already lit up in there. One of the cool things, so many manufacturers, they don't include lighting in a big storage cavity like this. Like I see people get the little command strip battery-powered lights all the time. You don't have to do that here. But that is also a motion-activated light. I just had moved around when I was recording things, so it already activated. You can turn it off, you can turn it on, you can leave it on motion mode. Now this is a big wide open chunk of storage and I would like to know, what would you do here? Would you find shelving organizers? Would you turn it into a closet space? What would you put inside this big sucker? I always like to take the extra time to close the slides up, show you the things in travel mode. Specifically, I get a lot of questions saying, can I use the Murphy bed in transit on this one? Because they extended the slide to include that extra storage right there, it does block the bed from coming down. You can see that it comes right up to the sofa. They utilized every ounce of space they could to give you maximum space and storage when you're in destination mode, I guess you could say. But here's one of the more interesting things. This is what I think is very cool about the difference between a 2507 and 2509. The 2509 is a very popular Murphy bed bunk model that is very, very similar. And it is very easy to glance at it and say, it's the exact same camper. It's not. They do a little bit different uh, kitchen countertop. And this one allows you, without ever touching the slide button or anything like that, to walk through the kitchen area, past the slide, never touching the slide button, and access the pantry, the bathroom, the everything there. And it's those key differences that, that really help separate the two. And if you appreciate the way that we take the time and effort to close everything up for you, do me a favor. Please hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave us some comments, and let's hop outside.
And like I said before, I think this is an ideal size. If you're going to be a half ton tower and goer, or if you got a bigger class SUV like an Expedition or something equivalent, I think this one could, could really do a heck of a job for you. Now the updates that they've applied to this camp kitchen here, I'm all for it. And I think the difference here is where they moved the cooker. Because you see over here where there's this little utility table. Rockwood traditionally sets the griddle or grilling station right next to that. But if you notice here, they put it on a swing out bracket on the bumper. That is atypical even for Rockwood, but that's one of the things I love about Rockwood. They never just say, well, this is all we use, sorry. They will use different features, different components and different methods for every single floor plan to make each model they make the best it can possibly be. And that is not normal practice within the RV industry, like these swing out cooktops. Now, are you noticing that you have two types of cooktops, by the way? You've got a griddle over here where you could actually do some real, like, you know, put a good sear on a steak, make your eggs, your bacon, your whatever. Over here, you can have some side dishes going. And it, by the way, here's a camping pro tip, ladies and gentlemen. Boil your water ahead of time before your camping trips, then just throw it in the freezer. Now you don't have to waste time in propane heating it up later. Sometimes my genius scares even me. <laughs> now this is all great this camp kitchen's wonderful you've got that big outside fridge i consider this a large camp kitchen versus a low profile with the small fridge but the thing is it's also they didn't just like they didn't waste anything they made sure that everything is treated nicely this is all the same pocket screwed cabinetry here the hidden hinges that you would have on the inside of the rv uh they've done everything the same uh a uh a, a, a thermal foil nope Ooh, what's the word? What's the word? Galvanized. There it is. Galvanized rolled steel countertops out here. So if you splash some water, no big deal. A real sink with a real drain. And that plug right there is pre wired to the factory inverter package. If you get either the solar package separately or the 12 volt fridge, that is one of the outlets that you can flip on the inverter and use it live while you're outside. And in case you're curious, this does have two propane cooker hookers down below because you have two propane cookers that need hookering up. Oh, yep, nope, that didn't come out right. Now I always like taking the time and effort to open things up and show you a little bit more. That's what we like doing here at Halet RV. Help you find your second camper the first time around. And a lot of times that means answering questions proactively like, can I stand under that uh, outside kitchen door? Well, I'm about 6'3"-ish. I can stand right under this thing. I can do the ET phone home neck stretch. I have to barely, I can, I can just, my hat can barely touch it when I get up on my toes. There's plenty of room under here. So it can act kind of like right now as a little bit of shade, you know, Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, light side, dark side between this uh, little pattern right here. The other thing I really wanted to show you is because this is a different kind of griddle setup for Rockwood. The bracket that comes with this that is atypical even for Rockwood acts as like a really nice kind of carrying method. But something else I wanted to show you here is it always comes with those handy little foot pegs. So if you want to put this on a table or something like that, you don't want to have it on the bracket for whatever reason, you don't have to. And actually, the feet are what hold the brackets in place. The other thing I was wondering about is like, these are, these are heavy. These are, they're, they're like, there's a big chunk of metal on top of this thing. It's pretty hefty. And I was like, how well is that bracket going to hold this thing? And I tell you what, it slots in place here. It is solid. And if you bump it, it's not going anywhere. That is, I mean, that is a good, good setup out here. When it's time to put everything away, I always like to see like how can all this, like it's nice to put it out for display, but how can I get rid of it effectively? That little workstation table tucks in very nicely right behind that strut. The door closes no problem. And since this is basically just a swing out bar, like there's a lot of bumper mount griddles and grill mounts that they're like, mm, they're, sometimes they're kind of a pain in the neck to work with because that's so simple, you never have that issue. And in terms of the gr grill storage, griddle storage itself, it fits very nicely into these outside compartments right here. Although if you've actively been cooking on it, I sure wouldn't leave it in there just as it is. I'd probably at least get like a hefty, hefty, hefty bag and wrap that sucker up. Uh, next to the outside kitchen, you see that black bracket on the wall, outside TV hookup. So if you want some full on outdoor entertainment, you got it. And notice how you've got a full camp kitchen with a big door, but look at this awning. You notice, you notice how the awning, it very easily clears the full entry door. So if it's raining, when the awning arm is right next to the entry door, you can get spritzed in the face a little bit. That's not likely to happen here, unless it's pouring, of course, then you probably want the awning rolled up. 
but it also encompasses the outdoor camp kitchen, which a lot of campers don't do. And I know a lot of people like, I know I like that feature. Not to mention if I put the camp kitchen away, I want all the patio space and I can get it here. We are riding on Goodyear Endurance Radials. I do long tours, by the way. I, I talk a lot. I'm sorry if you weren't aware. <laughs> but I give serious information for serious buyers. Hope you appreciate it. 80, uh, 87 mile an hour rated Goodyear Endurance Radials. And let me get you right down here. I want you to take a look at the, the little suspension link that hooks between the tires and the fact that it doesn't exist. These are effectively like a four-wheel independent kind of torsion axle and suspension system. Not technically, but that's essentially what you're getting here. It's not a normal leaf spring system. This is going to be one of the best riding, best handling systems out there. And if you need any more confirmation of that, understand that Rockwood didn't adopt Airstream suspension. Airstream adopted Rockwood's suspension, but you could buy like four Rockwoods for one Airstream. I'm not saying they're equivalent products. I'm just, that's, that's just a statistical fact. <laughs> and I almost forgot to mention the standard enclosed underbelly with 12 volt thermostatically controlled tank heaters to help keep you protected. Now, if you take note here, they're giving us the nice stable steps, but Rockwood, doing Rockwood things, they always make that like a zero gravity stable step. So if you got a bad shoulder or something, or you know, you got a little dog, you don't want to squish the dog when it's running around your feet. On the roof, we're going to see the solar package. I'll get you up there, but it also does have a simple side mount solar prep plug, whether or not you get the factory solar package. And you can, what's nice here is, let's say you want to park in the shade. Uh, you can still get a portable panel and chase the sun with it because the roof solar panel will be covered by the shade. Or you could use them both simultaneously because a portable panel has its own charge controller, so they're not going to flood your batteries, basically. These Rockwoods, by the way, um, they are uh lithium battery capable we are a battleborn dealer that is something that we can assist you with at halo rv you get your first common agm battery from us at no additional charge on top of the sale price we don't charge you extra for necessity bare necessity stuff like that rockwoods are kind enough to give us a big battery box that is empty but it, it can fit two batteries if you're so inclined of course again we can help you with a second battery too all LED tail and marker lights. This was built with the optional four corner power stabilizer jacks to make everything on this push button simple. Mini lights do not have an option for auto leveling, by the way. They're just physically too small. Mini lights stop at 25 feet, 11 inches in length, essentially. So this is about as pretty close to about as big as they get. Now, when you have a Murphy bed, outside, uh, outside, yeah, outside storage becomes tricky. There we go. I got it out. Um, they had to get unconventional. They had to get Rockwood on this thing, but it works. So you've got on both sides of the RV, there's a similar little side saddle pocket over here. It's just an empty pocket. You can do whatever you'd like with it. Under the sofa is our pass-through cavity. And Rockwood was really the first Murphy bed manufacturer to kind of crack the code on that. I argue, personally, we carry other brands here at Halo RV that have Murphy beds. I don't think anyone does Murphy beds better than Rockwood. I don't think anyone's ever done Murphy beds better than Rockwood. There was one other manufacturer that for a couple years kind of threatened that, and then they, I think, ruined their Murphy bed, but neither here nor there. Now this thing right here, we're going to go GI scope, ladies and gentlemen, and this is a big, tall storage cavity uh, behind the pantry, and it goes way, way up there. So, what could you do with that? Uh, in my head, fishing poles, golf clubs are always the first thing that pop into mind. But what would you use that space for? Leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. You see the optional slide awning up top added here? Rockwood does slide awning so cheap. It's like you can't afford not to get them. <laughs> I, liter no exaggeration, folks. They Rockwood can install slide awnings from the factory level at maybe one third of the price that my very good train team here at Halo RV could do them. There's a reason that on Rockwoods, we almost always factory option them because everybody else is way more expensive. I guess Rockwood just doesn't mark them up. Storage below the rear dinette bench wrapping around. And did you notice how that is all magnet holdbacks for easy access? Are you seeing the uh, aluminum structure under that? Anything Rockwood builds in house is going to have an aluminum skeleton. Uh, this is a uh, five side laminated product. The floor of this is the only thing that's not laminated. It is still aluminum framed, however. But like a luxury fifth wheel, Rockwood does a uh, 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking, which is ridiculously strong and overrated for this size and weight and class. But is too much structure ever the wrong thing? I, I don't think anyone will believe so. We are rear view camera ready 
We also have our black flush and outside shower over here, right above a uh, 300 pound rated accessory hitch. Now we're getting back here roughly to where we started over on the door side. I do want to take a quick second though. I was able to capture some footage of my uh, partner in crime, Mr. Mike America, quality controlling this thing on the way in to see that awning kind of coming out a little bit just to give you another look at how much space you have there before we hop upstairs. Now taking a walk on the wild side up here on the roofing. Apologies for my footprints, but you won't see those when you take the RV home because one of the many things that we do for you at no additional charge at Halo RV since we don't do hidden dealer fees, we clean the camper. We show you how it works, all that stuff. That sounds like stuff that you assume every dealership does. Some do, some do not. I just want to make it known that we are one of the folks that do it for you. Now, this is the bathroom vent back here. It obviously has that roof vent cover. That's a standard thing from Rockwood. But what you might notice when I twist you around to the front of the RV is that where the second XL vent fan was optioned from the factory, it also includes that big power vent fan cover, which is a really nice thing. Now, the 190 watt solar package plus 1000 watt inverter. You can get that uh, separate from the 12 volt fridge. So if you want to stick with the standard two way fridge and make yourself one heck of a, you know, a boondocking beast here, you can do that. You can actually from the factory uh, request a second 190 watt solar panel right next to it. You can get yourself a pretty good solar package going from the factory level here, plus an inverter for not all, but many of the outlets. But when you get the 12 volt fridge, it automatically comes with the 190 watt panel and 1000 watt inverter. Of course, you could always add the second one if you are so inclined. Now, something that you're not seeing anymore, but it didn't go away, is the Wi-Fi Ranger. It used to be like there was a separate little antenna up here. She's still here. It's just basically, it is the TV antenna now. So one fixture is doing two things. And that means that there's one less seal point that you have to worry about maintaining on the RV. But look at what Rockwood does with their sealant. They flood fixtures. They do not do minimum sealant so that you can spend maximum time camping with minimal upkeep. What do you think folks? Is that, or is that not just a, a very nicely compact, high class, compact traveling couples camper? That is excellence done excellently. Like Bill and Ted, bro, I know Kung Fu. He never knew Kung Fu. Actually, Keanu Reeves does know Kung Fu. I forgot about that. Oh, um, I did it again, didn't I? I got way off topic. <laughs> Regardless, antics aside, if you appreciate the information today, if you had a little bit of fun, hit the like button on the video, leave me some comments, let me know what you like about the RV, and please take a moment to subscribe to our family-owned and operated facilities YouTube channel here because we are always trying to go out of our way, just like showing you the extra things with the grill, the outside kitchen, the travel mode, always trying to show you the most possible information to earn your business, to earn your confidence and your trust when you're ready. We have some of the very best, like, Facebook, Google review scores, better business bureau ratings. Please look us up. I am not afraid. I am not afraid dare to compare against anybody else out there. I'll never tell you we're perfect. I will tell you it's never for a lack of trying. If that all sounds good, when you're ready, we're ready. Don't care where you live. They're on wheels. We can get them from here to there. It's not a big deal. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy! Hefty, hefty, hefty!